This has got to be one of the easiest ways to add an automatic battery backup directly to your home's electrical system. So if there was a power outage, you don't have to run for a flashlight. It just handles it all for you. Let me demonstrate. All of these circuits are now being powered by the grid. And so let's simulate a power outage and it will automatically transfer over to getting power from the battery. This is so cool because my house is now being powered by a single battery. Why I say it's easy is because once you have the sub panel wired in, you basically plug in the inverter and battery storage. EcoFlow sent these to me. This is the new Smart Home Panel 2, and the battery system is the Delta Pro Ultra. These two can work independently of each other, but they are designed to work together. So in this video, I wanna show you what installation was like, show you some of the features, and do some tests. So here's how it worked. I got this giant shipment from EcoFlow on a pallet with everything on it, then I hired a licensed electrician to install the sub panel for me. And I thought it was kind of fun that he asked me to have a half inch plywood board ready for the backing. So I actually took apart the pallet that everything came on. So thank you EcoFlow for providing the plywood as well. Now, one of the reasons why you would consider getting something like this besides for power backup is to save money because you can use a battery to your advantage if you have time of use rates, or maybe you're not getting the full net metering credit if you have solar. I just found out that we're being offered time of use rates here in Pennsylvania, so I'm eager to look into it more to see if that might be advantageous for us. So there are basically three parts to the system. The first is the Smart Home Panel 2. This is basically a smart sub panel where you can monitor and control individual circuits and do a whole bunch of other things. The other is the Delta Pro Ultra. It's got two main parts, the top part, which is the brains and the inverter. It handles all the input and output, and underneath is a six kilowatt hour battery. I've been playing around with it for a month and it has some impressive features that I have never seen before in a power station. I've made a video just about this unit on my solar channel that you might wanna check out. To connect the battery storage to your electrical system, you just have to plug it into the smart home panel. And with these two slots, you can add two more ultras and batteries for up to 90 kilowatt hours of storage and over 16 kilowatts of solar panels. The installation of the smart home panel too is pretty much the same as if you were installing a regular sub panel. I had to tell the electrician what circuits I wanted to be moved over to the sub panel. So I chose things like the refrigerator, kitchen, lights, and office. And to stress test the battery, I had him connect the hot water heater too. And because I have a really tight space here, it was a little bit more effort and it took him about a day and a half to wire everything up. The grid power is coming in off a breaker on the main panel and coming in through this 100 amp breaker on the smart home panel. And for the loads, it has 12 slots for normal circuit breakers that you can get at any hardware store. And here I have a double breaker. This is for the hot water heater. So you have these normal mechanical breakers on top, but part of what makes this a smart panel is that there's also electronic relays underneath. So I can remotely turn each circuit on and off without physically needing to switch the breaker. If the grid power is unavailable or you don't want it on, you have two other places for power input. Down here is where the battery connects in. I have the Delta Pro Ultra, but you can also have an adapter with two Delta Pros if you wanted. And this whole bottom box with the three connectors is removable. So if you wanted your battery somewhere else, say out in the garage, you can wire it in from a different location. The other input source is from a generator. I had the electrician install a 50 amp generator inlet box, and I'll do a test here shortly and show you how that works. The build quality on the sub panel is really nice. The electrician even commented how heavy duty it was. Setting up the Ultra is super easy. You just stack up your batteries and put the inverter on top. It does come with a rolling cart, but you can also get one with the bigger wheels and the telescoping handle. You can add batteries at any time in the future. And I like that the battery cables are low profile because I don't like the ones with the big connection cables that stick out and get in the way. I also like this system because it's somewhat portable. Like you can use it to power your home and then wheel it out to power your RV. I connected my RV's 50 amp plug with an adapter to the 240 volt outlet and it also hooked up the solar panels on the roof. And this thing can power the RV while getting charged by solar. Okay, now it's time to do some tests. Earlier on, I simulated a power outage and flipped the breaker, and it took about five to six seconds for it to automatically switch over to battery power. And that's because it's in eco mode. If you look into the app, you can see there's a setting called EPS mode. So it says for EPS mode that it should take about 20 milliseconds to switch over. So let's turn this on and do a test. So when I flipped that toggle, I heard it click inside the Delta Pro Ultra and one behind me in the Smart Home Panel 2. For this test, I have this laptop. It has no battery. You can see it's running off of grid power. So I'm gonna flip the breaker to simulate a power outage and let's see if there's any flicker on the screen or flicker with any lights inside of here. All right, I saw a flicker in the lights, but I wasn't paying attention to the screen. So it seems like it worked. The laptop's still running. I have three LED lights over here, and I noticed that one of them flickered briefly. But other than that, it was a seamless transition from grid to battery power. 
So the laptop and everything else is still running and the Delta Pro Ultra is outputting about 1200 watts. And if we take a look at the app, we can see similar information. You can see the state of charge, 82%, and it's outputting about 1200 watts from the battery to power all of the circuits in the house. And if I go to the individual circuits page, in real time, I can see how much power each of these circuits is using. And say, for example, because I'm running off a battery, I wanna turn off our radon fan if I go up here and I click that button, it will ask me confirmation. I'll do that. And this room got a little quieter because the fan is just over here. And so if I wanted to turn it back on, just click that button, it turns back on. So if you're in a situation where the battery has run out completely and you still don't have good power, you have the option of a generator input. And this can be either a gas generator or another battery that can output 240 volts. So for this generator test, I'm actually going to be using the Delta Pro Ultra as my generator. It has an L1430 standard 240 volt port that my generator cable can plug right into. And I have all my lights plugged into the Ultra as well because for this test, I'm going to lose power. And that's because with a sub panel like this, you're not allowed to back feed power to the grid. So in order to prevent it, you have this thing right here, which is called an interlock on the front. And it forces you to disconnect from the grid in order to turn on the breaker of the generator. So we'll turn off the grid, push this down, turn on the generator. The relays clicked after a couple seconds. So the generator is on, grid is off. It's being prevented from turning on with the interlock. And if we go down here to the Ultra, you could see it's outputting about 6,000 watts. It's running off of this generator output and my lights are coming over here. And what's using up most of this power is the hot water heater, which is right behind me. You can see the, uh, the lower element is on heating the water. And one thing that's amazing about this device, I just find this so incredible, is that it's outputting 6,000 watts, which is, which is about 25 amps, and I don't hear any fans. Now, if I put my ear right on this grill, I can hear some fans going, but where I'm standing now, I don't hear anything. To me, it's, this whole thing is silent. And you can see the estimate here at 6,000 watts of output with a 73% state of charge, it's guessing it would last about 44 minutes. So while this is still acting as my generator outputting 240 volts here to power the house, and you can see the hot water heater reached its temperature, it's not drawing as much current, I am gonna plug in a 120 volt source over here. And just to show you that you can input and output at the same time. So this is the very first power station that I've ever seen that can input 120 volts and output 240 at the same time. Another way to recharge the battery are with these 240 volt adapters for a generator or an EV charging station. You can use these to charge at 240 and still have all of the output options available. And of course you can use grid power to recharge the batteries. I have it connected up to the smart home panel over there. We're gonna use the app to set the rest of this up. Now to charge the battery, we're gonna go down here to charging power and I can change the input with this slider. So let's go, let's say there's a storm coming. We want this thing to charge as fast as possible. I have the charge limit set to 100%. And then what I need to do to start charging the battery is change the settings here. So with this slider, you have to choose how much you want to keep in reserve in case of a power outage. So once I slide this above the current state of charge, it will charge up to 100%. All right, so we've been charging for a few minutes. If I click on this right here, I don't know why it's not charging up to 7,200 watts, but it is charging around 6,400. So after this, I found out that you can only get up to 6,500 watts of charging with one battery. You need more than one to get the full 7,200. On the output side, you can get up to 7,200 watts, but you're limited to 30 amps per phase. For example, in this test, I pushed it past its 30 amp limit on one of the 120 volt phases, and the inverter peaked at 6,700 watts before going into overload. So down here in the app, there are three modes you can choose in order to use the battery to help you save on electricity costs. The first is called self-powered, and this means the battery will only be charged by solar when the state of charge is higher than the reserve level you set. In the second mode, you can schedule the charging and discharging of the battery so you can choose the exact dates and times that you want. Finally, you have time of use mode. I don't have time of use rates currently, so I can't say how this does but I was able to enter information for peak, off-peak, and super off-peak rates, and the algorithm is supposed to run to give you the best earnings over time. And in any situation, when running off the battery, you can choose one of the three priority modes for each circuit. So there's a lot of information you can see in terms of savings or just monitoring things. If I wanna see the consumption for today, 
you can see that my hot water heater used 52% of today's power that passed through the smart home panel. So it's pretty cool. I can keep an eye on things, what's using power and how much, and then maybe give me some clues as to things I might want to change. So this app's pretty cool, but one thing I wish it could do in the circuits is the ability to schedule the on off of these various circuits. I made this suggestion to EcoFlow. They seem to like it. So we'll see if that feature makes its way into the new version of the app. Solar input on this thing is really awesome. You can get up to 4,000 watts through the side high voltage input on these MC4 connections. Now a note on this bottom connection, I found it harder to disconnect and I don't know if it's because mine's a prototype unit, but this bottom port is a little loose. It also has a low voltage input up to 150 volts that can do 1600 watts. So with both connected, you can get up to 5.6 kilowatts per ultra. And in case you're wondering, I don't have plans to connect my current rooftop solar panels to the ultra because they are already paired with inverters and are grid tied at the meter. So I'll be using other solar panels. Here's one example of the self-powered scenario. I've got about 600 watts of solar coming in and the battery is powering the circuits with a thousand watts of output. When it reaches the low threshold I set, it will switch back to grid power. And this transition between grid and battery is seamless, though like in the previous test, I have noticed that on some of my lights, I can detect a faint flicker when it switches. See if you can catch it in this next example. Okay, there we go, it switched over now. One question that I've been asked related to charging is if you can charge with the DC output on the EcoFlow gas generator. And unfortunately, you can't but you can charge with the regular AC output. Here's an example where I'm charging with three input sources at the same time, the gas generator, and both high and low voltage solar inputs. So should you consider getting this? Well, if you have time of use rates, definitely run the numbers to see if it can save you money. Or if you wanna connect some solar panels to it, that might help you save on costs and be worth looking at. It would also be a great choice for a battery backup or an off-grid setup. Also, I'm not a tax professional and don't take this as advice, but I think this qualifies for the US federal 30% tax credit because it's a battery storage system over three kilowatt hours. The battery chemistry is lithium iron phosphate rated for 3,500 cycles, and these batteries have self-heating for colder environments, and the whole system has a five-year warranty. Now, because this is brand new, EcoFlow has some limited time coupons and deals available. I'll keep the video description updated with everything that I know.